Hey y'all, it's Samantha. Hi, I'm Kadesha. And I'm Sandy. And we're back with another amazing episode on the Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we talk about how to progress in your career in an industry that was not designed with us in mind. I'm so excited about this episode, y'all. You don't even understand because we're gonna be talking about the systematic problems in artificial intelligence and facial recognition. These algorithms these algorithms are affecting your day-to-day life and you don't even know it. But before we start, if you love what we are about, make sure you share this podcast with a friend or a coworker. And you might want to turn off your phones for this episode because the government might be listening because we're about to go deep. Earlier this year, Netflix released a documentary about how algorithms can be biased towards certain groups of people. It is called Coded Bias and we'll link it down below. I'm glad this documentary came out because it brings so much more awareness to the problem that technology is not built and designed with us in mind. Bad algorithms have falsely identified people who are not the actual criminal in question and facial recognition is tracking your location and is reducing your privacy and targeting your civil rights. I actually wanted to start this conversation by explaining what an algorithm is. Kadeja, can you break that down for us? Sure. So like the most basic definition of an algorithm. So an algorithm is pretty much a set of instructions that a person implements with code to solve a specific problem or to complete a specific task. For example, you want to log into your Instagram, right? There is an algorithm for that. There is a code for that. The code will take in your username and password and it will search the Instagram ecosystem for your specific login information on your profile and then you're routed to your profile page or the explore page or whatever. That's pretty much what an algorithm is. It takes an input and it gives you an output. That sounds great. So now that we're on the same page about what an algorithm is, Sandy, can you explain why some algorithms disproportionately weigh in favor or against an idea or thing, usually in a way that is closed-minded or unfair? That is an, that is a question, but I, I feel like the <laughs> I feel like the the reason why there is bias and it it can't ignore certain things is just because The way the algorithms are designed, they're not, they don't fully encompass every scenario. So that's why certain things do get kind of swept under the rug. Um, There there is this thing, just like with accessibility issues, sometimes you can code, like user, sometimes people can code some, a website for people who don't have accessibility issues, right? The accessibility issues is the blind spot. So that's kind of similar to algorithm bias. Maybe if it's coded by a certain set of individuals, they don't account for other individuals. That is one way that can be algorithm bi- bias. So it's basically accounting for that blind spot, right? That's, that's how bias is introduced. Yeah. So, so this conversation kind of originated over, around that movie, Coded Bias. And I was curious if you guys were, you all, sorry, not guys, were surprised by anything that you saw in Coded Bias. Yeah, <laughs> I was surprised, but not surprised, if that makes sense. So I know that our everyday life, like real life, tangible life is racist. There's like systemic racism all over the place. But it was so interesting to me that that systemic racism was translated or transferred into a lot of programs that we use every day. Something as simple as washing our hands and getting paper towel from the machine dispensary. A lot of times a paper towel dispenser doesn't recognize my hands because the machine wasn't trained to to see these hands. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's just so interesting. Like if you're, if you're not represented in a room, then you're not going to be represented in the product. And then that's going to translate into people in the real world, not being represented in that algorithm that was designed because the room is typically filled with older white men who are in charge and then younger white men who are doing the coding. Sweet. Um, so a, a big part of tech history is the Lena image. If you you are a computer science major, you probably already heard of the, the Lena image. For those who don't know, back in the 70s, Playboy released an image of a woman named Lena, and some tech bros decided to use this image for research. 
about how we can turn a physical photo into a digital, digital photo. The photo is important because it did lay the groundwork for what would later become the JPEG, which is what we use like all the time when we are saving images. But what is also really important about this photo is that it represents how women were left out and pushed out of the tech industry. And guess what? This photo is still being used today in computer science research all the time. The moral of the story is that when the tech that we use is developed by a small subset of homogeneous individuals, it becomes impossible for the end product to be without bias. So ladies, how do you feel about the tech industry being mostly men? And what are some things that we can do to help equal out the ratio between men and women and just increase diversity in general? Ooh, Samantha with the hard questions. <laughs> I know. I mean, I think it's definitely a pain point that there's such a huge lack of representation in the tech industry. Um, and I do feel like there are things being put into place to alleviate that issue, but it's just not at a, a, a big enough pace or fast enough pace. So like there are like pipeline programs and I think pipeline programs are a great way to bring, to diversify the tech industry, but I think there needs to be more. I think there needs to be uh, more programs that are free, that are quality. I think that can act that can actually alleviate that pain point, pain point of representation into tech. Like boot camps are great, but then again, it's very costly. If there were more programs like a boot camp, but not so expensive or other pathways of that same realm, I think that could really alleviate the diversity issue we have in tech. Yeah, in a and, couple episodes, yeah, a couple episodes, we did talk about how like boot camps were maybe a more affordable way than college, but. Let's just stop it while she gets back. I think I can edit that. Okay. Sorry for the hard questions, but I'm really into this topic and I'm just like... No, it's really good. <laughs> I was like, this is good. <laughs> I, I love talking about things like this. Yeah. I mean, I had like, I did like all my research. I was like, it's going to be a tough topic, but we'll see how it uh, Yeah, she came with her gun <laughs> cocked and loaded. <laughs> But I think it's very much needed because, we're, again, we're going deeper, deeper than the surface. This is things people don't often talk about. I've mm -hmm. I've talked yeah. I've been in these conversations before, but they're usually like in within rooms, not displayed on an episode or in anything of that sort. So, I think this is very good. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that because, like, I feel like Black people talk about this stuff all the time, but not time, like yeah. white people. I don't think are talking about this like all the time. So it's Enough. gonna be interesting to pull it, push it out to people. Yeah. yeah. I think I think um, the tech industry not being diverse is one of my biggest gripe with it. Um, it's so it's so difficult walking into a room and you don't see anybody else. <laughs> it's just you. It's just you and a bunch of men and a few sprinkles of women, uh, white women, and it's just like, wow, okay, all right, here we are. And I think that's one of the reasons I started being more online and sharing my journey in technology because I want people to see that. Even though there aren't a lot of us, there are a lot of us. <laughs> and you can feel free to join and just come into the fold with us. Yeah. So another point that I wanted to, that was interesting to me about the Lena story was how women are being left out and pushed out of the industry. Do y'all think that you will stick around for years to come? Mm. I, I don't know. Cause this industry is a tough industry if you're a person of color and you're a woman. It is. Am I allowed to say I don't know? I love my job right now. Everybody <laughs> from NM is listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I It's not my intention to work for the rest of my life. So that's always been my exit plan anyway, to do something on my own and then dip <laughs> and go live on a beach somewhere. But I, I don't know about tech. It's, it's definitely a lucrative industry, but money isn't everything. Your health is important, mental health is important, and feeling um, psychologically safe in your work environment is very important. 100%. I agree with Kadesha. I had the same mindset. Like, I wanted to be in the tech industry um, and learn as much as I can, but I didn't want to work in the tech industry forever. I also know that there, there is, like, issues with ageism in tech so that's a that's another reason why 
I personally didn't want to work till I was like 65 or beyond that. Um, yeah. And you know, I'm a millennial. <laughs> we have the entrepreneurial spirit. I also want to, you know, branch off and start something else in the, in the next few years. So I also don't really see myself working in tech past like yeah. 35 or so. Yeah. Whoa, you must be real young, girl. Right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, 30. <laughs> Like right around the corner for me, girl. Okay. This girl said 35 or so. I'm like, ooh. I, nothing about the I just be like, like I, I want to work in it for a decade, but then after that. Well, same. You said the same thing yeah. twice. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, I'm glad you started your career early and hopefully you have that young energy to stay in it as long as you can because I have definitely experienced the, the rough part of being in the tech industry as a black woman. And for me, that was good because now I understand that I do want to create my own value and get out from underneath working for somebody, but then creating my own value and working for myself. I think tech is a really great industry. A lot of new innovations are coming out. And if all of the people of color and the black women are leaving the industry, who is going to be in the room? So why is it important to have people of color in position of power in tech? Because the people in position of power, especially in technology, they're the ones that's driving the needle. They're the ones that are making all the decisions when it comes to how we, how we do things in our everyday life. Think about applying for a job, right? I saw an article the other day about, I think it was Amazon or one of those big tech companies. Like their algorithm automatically canceled out women who went to women college either it was like automatically um rejected women entirely or automatically rejected women who went to a specific women's college and i was just like wow they really encoded that they really put that in the code to say oh if it's a woman just bye bye so it's just like i can only imagine how much that affects us as black people especially in this country it, it affects us so it's very important for us to be in the rooms because if we're in the rooms we can say well it shouldn't be that way or you know we, need, we really need to include this aspect of it or have we considered x because x typically affects all of us yeah because you were talking about earlier about the algorithms and the input and output right so somebody is literally telling if you get this information from something i will output maybe the racist part yes out. <laughs> so uh, exactly. the, I, I i definitely heard of the story about job applications even like putting in certain zip codes mm -hmm. you would get automatically rejected because you live in a certain neighborhood so yep it's quite crazy that people are even physically something like your animals. name yeah yep your name so there are like apps that are trying to combat this i think it's called blind not blind um that's a different app but there's there's apps that are trying to be like <laughs> no picture no name you just get their information to help kind of reduce some of the bias level the playing field that's crazy man and the industry has has had um decades to to thrive off of all these systemic racism that's built in so it's going to take even more decades to unravel it and it's going to be very difficult to unravel it because a lot of people are going to be like, well, I'm not racist. So actually you are, you know, you just don't don't realize it. And it's just like this is the way it's always been. Well, that's the problem. That's why it needs to be fixed. Yeah. And even like when it comes to training images, there was this one thing on Twitter about how they had a black dog at the top and a white dog at the bottom. And Twitter usually focuses on certain parts of your photo if it's a really long or wide photo. And it would always focus on the white dog. So that means that somebody is training this algorithm to not recognize different shades of color and only preferring uh, white colors or lighter version of things. So that was really interesting. I remember seeing I that. I was like, that. wow. And yeah, we'll link that below as well just so you can see how. Wow. wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've known about algorithm bias for quite some time now. I learned about it in my coding boot camp. You might be thinking, I don't have to worry about this now, or it doesn't affect me, but it does. Um, Kadeja did pick up this earlier, but like a great example is when you're in a public bathroom. Yeah, you know you do your thing, and then you have to wash your hands, right? Make sure you wash your hands. But you might notice the water not turn on for you. 
there are a few factors that come into play, like the cleanness of the sensor, the distance your hand is, is away from the sensor, and the battery life. But the real problem is, is how the light reflects off a darker skin. Um, an algorithm receives that light system data and determines if you should turn it on or not. So sometimes I have to ask somebody else to do that for me. But ladies, are there any other examples of algorithm bias that affect your life today? Well, I did thinking of having this conversation, I did think of something. It's kind of small, but it is like I feel like right. So like you know how we're I hope are we all iPhone users here? Um no. so no. <laughs> okay, well it isn't it isn't okay, it isn't I've had matter. I've had yeah. an iPhone though. I've had an iPhone. <laughs> so one big issue I noticed when I was younger, iPhone has been around a long has been around for a long time now, but when you would look at emojis, like there's always like one set of color. They think they just recently like introduced different skin tones and shades. And I, it was like a huge hit. I feel like a lot of people of color were, like, were so excited because you're, you're kind of seeing yourself represented instead of just seeing the yellow images and things like that. So I just feel like that was another way where it was very small, but there was like some algorithm, algorithmic bias or design bias harmless but still a lot of people were feeling some type of way because their image was not represented in in these images yep 100 percent. that reminds me of even pinterest um so i used to use pinterest a lot but especially looking up like hairstyles but when i would type in hairstyles it wouldn't be my hairstyles i'm just like my hair doesn't look like that yeah. and then i would, and try, I would to try to be specific, specific with my search and even so it's still it still wouldn't do it but um but i know they recently um implemented a feature where you can select like your specific shade of brown or um color of your skin which is very helpful because it helps to bring up the images that you're actually looking for yeah and that's actually really good why people of color being in tech and having some position of power is really important because the person who did come up with that feature was a black woman 99% sure that was a black woman who came up with that because she saw the issue as well. Like, I always have to type hairstyles for black women versus not yes. just select my shade of color, which is nice um, to have. So, wow. um, another great example would be like social media, right? Girl, yes. All three of us are on social media, <laughs> and the algorithms do favor people of lighter skin. Usually, we'll get to the top. So, people of color will have to definitely work harder to get their faces seen. Like little tiny mm. things here and there are affecting your lives, and you just don't even you know. don't realize, right? Girls, there is so much that we impact in this one episode. We are going to need a woosa after all of that. That is why I can't wait for the next episode of Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we will focus on how to take care of your mind and bodies as developers. Can't wait to see y'all in the next one. Bye.